Good day, fellow planeteers. Welcome back to Passport Planet, a channel where I make fun of your country. Today we're going back in time to Canada in 1972, when the Prime Minister was Trudeau, an admirer of Communist China. There's a level of of、uh, admiration I actually have for China. Sorry, wrong clip. I mean the other Trudeau, an admirer of Communist China. Damn, every day is like Groundhog Day in Canada. Hey. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. On that note, let's dive in and see what history has in store for us. Welcome to Canada, where the flags are always half mast and cell phone plans are always expensive. This episode of Passport Review is brought to you by Canadian Truckers. You notice instantly that this passport got its corners cut off. That's because it's an old passport that's been cancelled by cancel culture, which is a very Canadian thing. This Canadian passport is also bigger than its modern version. This is the case for every country due to the standardization of passport sizes. I just think everyday Canadians will be glad to know that the loonies purchasing power is not the only thing that shrunk over the past 50 years. On the cover, we can see the word passport in both English and French. This is because Canada is a bilingual country where English and French share the official language status, just like Cameroon and Vanuatu. But unlike Cameroon and Vanuatu, who display everything on the passport in English and French, the Canadian passport forgot to put the name of the country in French. And don't tell me Canada in French is still Canada. That's some bullshit. Vanuatu in French is still Vanuatu, yet they made the effort of translating. The language minority in the country will thank you if you put the French translation of Canada on the passport, and don't forget to make the French text twice as big as the English one in order to be compliant with Quebec laws. Now on to the coat of arms. The Canadian coat of arms, at first glance, looks like the British coat of arms with extra steps. On second look, though. Still looks like the British coat of arms with extra steps. Well, that just sounds like slavery with extra steps. There are some differences. Hold on, let me get my British passport. All right, as you can see, the main difference is that the British one looks way better. I mean, it's clean and dignifying. The Canadian one looks too busy. You might notice that the coat of arms on this passport is different than the one on the modern passport. W- one sec. Here you go. The government modified the coat of arms in 1992. The main difference is that they added a second national motto, which made things even busier. Speaking of the national motto, I always thought the Canadian national motto was "Sorry about that," but apparently it's "From Sea to Sea," a blatant plagiarism of "America the Beautiful," which was published 30 years before this emblem was designed. Credit where it's due, Canada did try its best to hide the piracy by translating it into Latinx. Hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a bit so it doesn't look obvious. Okay. Upon opening, we see the request page. It reads: The Secretary of State of External Affairs of Canada requests, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance. And to afford the bearer such assistance and protection as may be necessary. This reads a little bit different than the request on modern Canadian passports, mostly because they have changed the title of Secretary of State of External Affairs into Minister of Foreign Affairs. Overall, this page got nice texture and beautiful font. At the bottom of the page, it says this passport is printed by the Canadian Banknote Company, which is still printing passports for Canada today. Over on page one are some statements and instructions. The font is less classy than on the left, but it's very easy to read. One thing that stands out is that here it says a Canadian citizen is a British subject. Now that's a word you don't hear often these days. The term has different meanings depending on the time period. Before 1949, anyone from the British Empire and its colonies is a British subject. 
That means if you were born in Canada before 1949, you have the right to become a British citizen. If you were born in Canada between 1949 and 1983, you're still a British subject, but your pathway to British citizenship will be the same as anyone else's. After 1983, Canadians are no longer British subjects. In a second, we're gonna flip over to the personal information page. But before that, remember a free way to support the channel is to like, subscribe, share, and comment. As always, the bio page will be available for patrons and channel members. All right, this is Giorgio. He's a naturalized Canadian citizen. There's something odd about this bio page. I'll give you three seconds. See if you can find it. That's right, this passport doesn't have sex markers, which is amazingly radical and progressive for its time. I mean, don't get me wrong, Canada today is still the most radical country. The future of mankind. So we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go, exactly. <laughs> And we all know that Canadians can choose gender X on the passport, but nothing is as progressive as not showing the gender at all, like on this passport. Granted, some countries were pretty flexible too. For instance, the Thai passport, which I have shown you, was very inclusive towards ladyboys. Check out that video by clicking the top right. My point is, Canada seems to be as progressive as Thailand back in the 70s. I know it says Mr. here, but it doesn't indicate gender. Anyone can be a Mr., a Miss, a Mrs., or a Ma'am. It is Ma'am! I mean, how can you be sure Giorgio here wasn't identifying as a two-spirited First Nations member? You can't. And it would be wrong for you to assume his gender or racial identity. Another thing I find very interesting about this page is that the dates, the birthplace, and the hair and eye colors are only in English. This is not possible today because the bilingual requirements on Canadian documents are ridiculously strict nowadays. But apparently at the time of the passport, which was only three years after the Official Languages Act was passed, there was still some breathing room. Turning over to page 4 and 5, we got observations and endorsements. Nothing too special here, but you might realize that this cancel stamp on the passport is only in English too. This is problematic. Some dude from Quebec might pick up this passport and don't understand the cancel stamp and think this is still a valid passport. That might pose a threat to Canadian public safety. For those who don't know, Quebec is a province in Canada, although it's not even a signatory to the Canadian Constitution, so technically it's not a part of Canada. The point is, Quebec is the French country. They are very adamant about their language and identity. In fact, around the time of this passport, Quebec separatism was at its highest. Groups such as the FLQ were carrying out all sorts of radical activities in order to secede from Canada. From the 1960s to 70s, despite being 13, I mean 30% of the population, Quebecois committed 100% of terrorist crimes. In the end, the Canadian government agreed to make concessions to Quebec in every major policy decision. So it's apparent that besides English and French, there is another language Canada understands. All right, let's go over design and security features. Every page has a patterned crown. Watermark shows the same, pretty plain compared to other countries' passports in the same era. On the very back, you got some safekeeping notes. One thing that stands out is that it says the passport bearer may file emergency passport applications at a British consular post. This is about the only benefit you get as a British subject but it only applies when there's no Canadian consular posts around. That's it for the Canadian passport. They used very high quality material, which explains why there isn't much wear and tear even after 50 years. It carries quite a bit of history. I hope you've learned something. See you in the next video. Bye.